In this episode, I'm going to show you how to easily model out a prop weapon like this Fortnite SMG. I'm Yasu from Hero Creations, and let's get started. For this tutorial, I'll be using a software called Fusion 360. For the majority of us, it's completely free, whether you're a student or a small business earning less than 100 k And in my opinion, is one of the best CAD modeling packages out there for the price. Now as a quick preference, I just realized when I was screen capping all of this that it wasn't capturing all the context menus where you can see me click on various tools. So I'll do my best to supplement and uh, add screenshots of what I'm actually clicking on to give you an idea of navigation. The very first thing you're going to want to do is import your, your reference images. That could be one image of it on the side, that's usually my preference. Or you can do a collage of fronts, sides, tops, whatever straight on angles that you have. You can do this by clicking on the insert canvas on your toolbar, like so. I tend to find the attached picture tends to be a little bit small, so I'll usually increase the size of it by a factor of 10. Once we have our reference images squared away, our first steps will be to sketch out the basic outlines and shapes of what we want to create. In the interest of time, I don't really want to cut anything, so what I will do with the filler parts is fast forward through it. If they're not, all the important parts will still be covered and shown in depth. So step one is to start modeling out the rough sketches, that is the shapes and outlines of each individual part on the proper modeling. So in this case, I started out with that tail bracket piece. Not sure what it is, given this is a wastelandy type vibe. Uh, to do this, I opened up the patch workspace and started sketching out my lines to extrude. Getting the proportions of your prop right can be a bit of art and science. The easiest way to nail the proportions is to have two different reference images. That is a side profile image and then a front or a top profile. So that allows you to get your X and your Y proportions correct and then everything else falls in line. Otherwise, if that doesn't work, using your hand measurements to figure out the width of the grip can also help you figure out what your proportions need to be. So for this particular session, I spent a fair amount of time sketching out every single angular section of the prop, leaving the circular sections like the barrel uh, completely untouched till later. What you'll notice is I'm just simply tracing the outline of what I'm seeing in the reference image. With the intent of using the extrude tool in my modeling workspace to create the uh, the volume, the shapes that I want. Now a note at this point in the process I'm just doing the bare minimum outlines and details so no just the base no details no bolts no um, indents or anything like that that comes later. Once the basic outlines are all laid down the next step is to select each subsection we want and uh, hit the E hotkey, which is uh, extrude, and that creates a new body that um, forms the basis of whatever part we're, we're creating. So in this case, I'm creating the, the body, the main body, the receiver of the submachine gun. When, it's, when it comes to extruding bodies, one thing I personally like doing is extruding each section, each, uh, so say you have the grip and the barrel or the magazine. I like to do those as each separate extrusions in, and create a, uh, a new body. Otherwise what will happen is you end up joining all the pieces together into one single body, which that's cool, but if you're looking to print this out, that may be cumbersome to cut up and split apart logically later on, so it's easy to print. So my preference is um, extrude everything as separate bodies from separate sketches. That will make organizing all the separate parts and components in your prop model significantly easier. Alright, once you got all your bodies extruded in the way that you want, the next step is to start adding all those raised or uh, inscribed details into the body that I told you to ignore doing. So just like you were sketching out the original basic bodies, 
you want to um, basically select the face you want to put the details into and start sketching again just tracing over those details that you can see on the reference image and once it's all sketched out you're just simply using the same extrude functions as we did in the prior steps to ensure certain parts like the safety knob is completely symmetrical what I'll do is I'll model it in one position and then use the move tool to rotate it into the position as seen on the reference. A quick fun tip here on how I got the uh, like a perfect sort of half circle on each end of that uh, what looks like an injection port for uh, bullets uh, was that I took the line tool and I dragged it kind of in a semicircle fashion and then let go at the point of a half circle. It kind of, um, I have mine set to snap automatically to grid lines so it's pretty easy to make sure it all matches up. All right, so we got half the body done and we got all the details on the grip and the receiver and the magazine the way we like it. Next phase is to move on to working on the barrel where we're gonna use a slightly different set of tools but more or less the same principles. Let's get to it. First off, we're gonna create a new sketch where we're gonna start creating our first circle. That will be basically the center barrel. Once we have it positioned relative to the reference picture, we're going to extrude it. Now at this point, it looks like I had forgotten or missed a few details on the body of the um, machine pistol. So I actually went back and uh, made some adjustments and put in the details. Then once I was satisfied with the body of the, uh, the machine pistol, I started working on the grip, which had a few more, a little more complicated features that needed some care, as well as I wanted to make a separate body for the printing. Up until now, I've been doing a pretty simple meat and potatoes process of you know, sketching out the object on the plane, then extruding it and then doing more sketches and cutting it away to sort of almost sculpt the body or object. Here to do the, uh, the radiator, this sort of outer barrel on this machine pistol, I actually had to do something slightly different to get that slightly flared out curve. That is using the loft function where essentially I drew two circles on two different planes adjusted the size so that one was slightly smaller, the other one was a little bigger, and then used the loft tool to connect the two planes together and um, create a whole body. And just like that, the loft created a very nice curve matching that of the reference photo. Of course, my work's not done here, as I needed to put in all those little holes, for which we'd go back to our trusty old sketch and extrude techniques to make those holes.
creating the holes horizontally or vertically is pretty easy. It's just a simple of selecting the right plane and just sketching out. Doing them at an angle, however, proved to be a little bit tricky. So what I ended up doing was drawing them out on the plane, but then using the move tool to rotate them until they were in a position that I liked. You'll notice up to this point that I've only been really modeling half of the machine gun, except for the, uh, the barrel, of course. Well, that's about the change in which... Well, that's about the change. Since this model tended to be fairly symmetrical, that is, the features and details on one side are pretty much the same as the other, it was pretty easy for me to go ahead and mirror all the bodies that are... It was pretty easy for me to go ahead and mirror all the bodies that were cut in half and create an exact duplicate on the other side. Once mirrored, there isn't much left to do except the final detail work and adding anything that wasn't necessarily symmetrical. And of course, joining the two halves together. And that, folks, is how you model up a Fortnite tactical SMG or really any gun prop using Fusion 360. Now, I hope this tutorial was helpful. I appreciate any feedback and comments on uh, what you thought, your takeaways from it, or if there's anything I can do to improve it. I read everything and um, I try to reply back to comments. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment them here or even DM me directly. I'm happy to answer them. Feel free to also like, share, and subscribe to my channel. It really helps a ton and it really helps a ton in helping me boost the signal. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.